Okay, so today we're talking about the new anti-tamper, um, which uh, you get a little spoiler by reading the subtitle of Fighting Piracy by Sacrificing Paying Users. Um, so the Nuvo initially, it's a DRM, which stands for a Digital Rights Management um, Software, which is intended to protect copyright of digital media, um, which is mostly used for music, for movies, music, and what we care about is games. So all the games that you see up there um, has all used the Nuvo at one point or another, and they have all been cracked. And a cracked version of a game basically means that there is a pirated version that circumvents the Nuvo. So um, the method metric that we're going to be measuring the Nuvo by is going to be whether how long from a game's release date to how long it has been cracked. So in examples such as FIFA 18, it was released, I think, like sometime in September, but I know that it was cracked the same day it was released. Uh, <laughs> um, but, there, but there are other cases, such as in Just Cause 3, where it was took about, I think, almost over a year um, to crack, which in the world of piracy is extremely rare because things tend, the turnaround time tends to be like, at most, maybe a month. Um, which is where Far Cry New Dawn and Yakuza Like a Dragon fall into. I think they took about around a week to a month to um, be cracked. And then Doom Eternal is a special case um, because if you were not aware, Bethesda had a leak like the day before release date. So, the, so Doom Eternal, the cracked version of Doom Eternal came out the day before the actual official release date. <laughs> <laughs> so special cases all around. There's a few other examples of that. But what is Denuvo specifically? So Denuvo is a DRM owned by IR Data, or I think they're like a subsidiary of IR Data at this point. And um, like other proprietary technologies, the inner workings of it is unknown. Because if you, if me not working for Denuvo knew how Denuvo worked, then Denuvo would not work. So that's why they had to keep it kind of. Um, Obscure, and as well as um, if you are familiar at all with the Nuvo, you know that it's plagued with a lot of controversy. So, first of all, how does it work? Um, again, like I want to emphasize that no one fully knows how it works. Even like seasoned crackers, um, which are people that crack games, um, they don't really know how it works. It's all just mostly speculation. But the best I could, the best I could do, is let's say you have a game, and then what? How to essentially protect it with the Nuvo is you you crop out like a certain number, a certain chunk of code of that game. So in this case you crop out this, the main menu and then you um, you give it to the Nuvo. So the, the original game that you're going to be posting onto Steam or wherever does not have a main menu. So um, how that gets fixed is that you package your game with the Nuvo and then the Nuvo sends back a modified version of, a, of your main menu that only works for your specific hardware configuration. So that means if you want to play the same game that you bought on, let's say, a laptop, um, like you have another, you, you sold it on your PC, but you want to play on your laptop now, you can't because that's just a completely different system. Um, so that's part of one of the, all the controversies. So there's a few more. Um, one of the bigger ones is probably the performance impact. Um, it's mostly seen in a f like a few games. Most games with the Nuvo have very negligible performance impact, but there's a few special cases where it's really noticeable. So for example, Final Fantasy 15, um, there has been a test done where uh, I think a reporter compared a game, like a legitimate copy versus a pirated copy without the Nuvo, and they found that load times increased for about 10 times um, for games with the Nuvo. <laughs> So, and that's like not insignificant. That is like a good chunk of your time just sitting in a loading screen. So, yeah, that's one of the biggest controversies. Another one is going to be that almost all, almost always online, um, because the Nuvo has to constantly check with the server saying, hey, I'm a verified user, I'm a verified user, I'm a verified owner of this game. And it doesn't do this all the time, but it does do it constantly enough where it's kind of a nuisance. Um, I believe the timeline is about once a week. So I think for most people, you'll be fine because everyone's kind of online like all the time. Um, but if you are the type of person to kind of go offline for like an extended period of time, you won't be able to play, you know, your favorite game because the Nuvo can't check that and verify that you're a certified user. And more recently is um, Intel Alder Lake. And then I'm going to extend it to also M1 problems because of how similar the architecture is. So the problem with Alder Lake is that the, the new CPU architecture uses a similar to um, an M1 where it has performance cores and then it has efficiency cores. Um, and, the, and the way I showed it to you earlier where the Nuvo sends you a modified version of like a main menu that works specifically for your hardware. So what happens in this case is that the Nuvo thinks that your performance cores and your efficiency cores are two separate systems. So in some cases, it just wouldn't work. Like, um, and then I extend it to M1. Um, there's no sources whether or not it works on M1 because who games on a Mac? But, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's why I kind of extend it, but there's no official sources um, of that yet. And then, so given all these controversies, it's not really a surprise that there's a good chunk of games that, that after release have removed the Nuvo. 
Um, so most recently, in my memory, was Life is Strange True Colors. It um, initially came out at, with the Nouveau result, but then it was removed four days later from all the backlash. And then um, more recently, I think yesterday, actually, Jedi Fallen Order removed the Nouveau after about two years, and then Tekken 7 removed it after about like one year. Um, so, and then th these aren't the only examples. There's like a giant Reddit post of games that used to have the Nouveau, and then they just removed it from either legitimate performance concerns or... Um, like just user backlash from just associating their game with the Nouveau. So given all that, let's look at how much the Nouveau actually costs. Um, these are alleged numbers, but basically it's, it, it's around 160k for about the first year of protection, and then um, about 2.3k for every additional month, and then um, some additional more fees if the game is extremely popular or if you port it into a different system, which kind of makes sense because... Um, if you import it to a different system, then the Nouveau, the way they have to kind of obfuscate their, um, the code that you give them is going to be different. So given all this and given how it's expensive, also this isn't actually that bad when you think about it because you're, because these are used for like big budget AAA games like with like million dollar budgets. So it's not actually that bad. Um, but it's still a cost that you kind of have to consider um, if you were, if you're comparing whether or not you would include it or not include the Nouveau. So given all that, does it at least work? That's kind of the question I want to answer. <laughs> like, are there some examples? Like, you've seen like some of them, but like oh, generally, does it at least work? Um, and the answer to that is like, eh, <laughs> kind of. Like it sometimes works. Um, so there's this really good Reddit thread on the subreddit um, Crackwatch that keeps a list of keeps a list of all the games that has the Nouveau and then says like, okay, which ones are cracked and which ones have never been cracked and then which ones, um, and then it shows you like the dates between the release date and then the dates that they were cracked. So if you look at the uncracked Nouveau games, there's a decent number. Um, so some of them make sense. For example, like Football Manager 2022. I don't know who plays that, but um, it was released like yesterday, so there's not going to be a cracked version of it. Um, but there's some games that have lasted a very long time. So for example, Handball 17 has been like five years. Um, Trials Rising has been like three years um, since since its, since its release date, and it still haven't been cracked. So there's a small list of basically games that have lasted a long time that um, have resisted a bunch of, uh, of being cracked. So um, and some more examples like Far Cry 6 has been about a month. Um, usually that's a turnaround time. Um, so it does work in some cases, but then let's look at the cases where it has been cracked and look at kind of how long did it take. So this is a list of um, Crack the Nouveau games that I think use the Nouveau um, 4.9 or above. Um, and there's another smaller, there's another like way larger list under this that use the older versions of the Nouveau. And they've also all been cracked and they've also been cracked like pretty easily it looks like. Like the, like the turnaround time has been pretty, um, pretty fast. So um, some highlights from this list is going to be Left Alive. It took about two years to crack, which is an anomaly. And as well as Anno 1800, which also took about two years, a little under two years to crack. Um, then we have some games like Far Cry New Dawn, which is kind of fits the more expected um, time range of when it's good cracked, which is about like, uh, I think like a week. Yeah, it took about a week for it to crack. And then um, again, kind of want to highlight Doom Eternal um, was cracked the day before it was released. <laughs> So, yeah, with the Bethesda leak, so I guess they kind of just cracked it themselves. And then you'll notice that like, it also tells you um, what cracking teams you know, um, that cracked them. So if you've you know, ever pirated anything in your life, you might have recognized some of these names, like Codex. Um, and then last highlight would be um, Wolfenstein Youngblood, which took about a little, under, uh, a little over half a month to crack. So you've seen like, these massive like, variations in... Like how long it takes to crack. So like why? That's the real question. Like why does it, there's such this massive variation of like some games take years to crack, whereas some games take like no time at all. Some games defy time travel in fact. Um, so let's look at some reasons of why, of what influences the rate of piracy for some games. Um, so the first one is probably the most obvious. It's going to be how well integrated is the Nouveau into your game, right? Because the more, essentially the more code that you send the Nouveau for them to obfuscate, the more, the harder it is to crack. But then you also risk the fact that this, the code you send them might have a significant performance impact. Um, so it's going to be a balancing act. And this is probably like the best theory I have that some games take a really long time to crack. Like they were just extremely riddled with, um, many protection layers. And then another one, pretty obvious, is going to be popularity and demand. Like, no one's going to be wanting a cracked version of Super Moose. Like, I found this game for like $3 on Steam, and then it was like 10 reviews, and then one of them was like, gave it to my kid for Christmas, and he hates me now. 
<laughs> like, no one, no one cares about having this game cracked. And that's probably one of the major factors. For example, um, if you looked at the list earlier, there's Handball 17. I've never heard of Handball 17. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of Handball 17. It's probably why it like lasted five years, because no one really cares. Um, so yeah, that's probably one of the major reasons. And then another one is going to be um, convenience and pricing. And then there's this really good quote by Gabe Newell, where he essentially argues that privacy or piracy is an issue of service, not price. Um, and this was him talking about on the, um, I believe like the release of Steam or when he was talking on, about Steam. And then he was essentially arguing that like, um, instead of fighting the act of piracy itself, you should be fighting the causes of piracy. And the one major cause of piracy and a kind of free steam was the pirates were offering a better service than the actual legitimate game makers because it was just easier to pirate a game that had everything together. So if you remember, like, um, with, like, really old PC games, like, you had to go out and buy, like, six different discs for, like, a really high, like, density game. Um, and then it was just easy to just uh, download, like, a, a cracked version of it online. And that was kind of, that's kind of the best way to describe what, how the Nuvo went wrong, where they're essentially just attacking the act of piracy rather than, it's, rather than like kind of setting back and evaluating why um, these people are pirating in the first place. And that's why I think um, Steam probably had an impact. The thing is why I said probably is because it's pretty much impossible um, to gather data about kind of the rates of piracy pre-Steam and then after Steam. Because gathering, gathering data about piracy is just really hard in general because there's different cracking teams, there's different versions, there's different, especially with different editions, it's just extremely hard. So we can't know for sure. But from personal experience, it is a lot easier to just like buy a game off Steam than go and pirate it. Because like when I was like 13 or 14, I used to like pirate game all the time because I didn't have money. Uh, um, and like some of these, some of these craft games had just extremely long instructions on how to get them cracked. Like you had to, you know, turn off your firewall. You had to turn off your internet connection. You had to do a blood sacrifice. It was just really annoying. <laughs> um, so in this case, it's just a lot easier. And Steam kind of, I'm going to assume and just go out on a limb that Steam probably made a pretty big impact. And it was just easier to just buy games off Steam or GOG or Epic Game Store or probably not Ubisoft Connect, but you know, like one of those. <laughs> It was just easier. Um, it's probably one of the biggest features. And um, yeah, that's my talk. Thank you. Questions? <laughs>